What's up, everybody? It's Will Barrel here, and uh, I'm with the man, the myth, the customizer, Huck G. Huck G. Huck G. Huck G. Doesn't G. matter. G. I go by G. You can go with either. Yeah. Whatever you want. Huck, <laughs> the man. <laughs> Anyways, Huck, how you doing? I'm good. I'm solid. Cool, man. Well, it's, we're glad to have you here in lovely Boulder, Colorado. Yeah, thanks you're for having me. Getting ready for your signing tour. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. We just, you know, we got a couple questions we want to ask you, kind of pick your brain, see where okay. you're coming from, where you've been, where you're going. Um, I'm curious, man, how did you get into art? Um, I've been, uh, how did I get into art? I guess I've been, I mean, I've been drawing since I was a kid. Um, that was, that was my escape. Yeah. You know, it was army men stories and tanks and planes as, as a small child, and then, uh, into my teens, it was all Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> it was mechanized, gnome power, dragons, and everything else. Um, but then I kind of took a break for a long time, and it was until I discovered and bumped into graffiti that I really got inspiration again, and I realized that art was cool. I guess you could say, you know, it it, drew, it caught my attention. Like I'm like, wow, this is fun. I have buddies that are sitting in their sketch pads all day long drawing. So that pulled me back in. And um, did you have any formal training? No, no. I've just been doodling sketchbooks, and I guess the 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 process it went from uh, doodling and graffiti. I ended up spending more time actually doing characters in sketchbooks than I did going up and getting out. And then those characters, it just became character after character after character in sketchbooks, and that progressed right into, oh, hey, look, toy design. Toys when, are awesome. When you were a kid, did you have a lot of toys? Were you the type of guy to take your G.I. Joes and mix and mash them well, and blow them up with firecrackers? No, but I, see, I grew up in England, and we had Action Man, which out here was the old 12-inch G.I. Joe figures. Okay, okay. And so I grew up with 12-inch figures, which were sort of the you know the basis for this current toy movement whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. um, and that was my childhood was my mom would sew sweaters for my action man <laughs> for that was like you know Christmas present was, oh awesome and I had new clothes and they were badass they were they were you know giant action man and then so there was that and there was Legos and those two were probably the yeah the two main toys of my childhood was uh, there anything or anyone in particular that kind of like inspired you as you're going along sketching and you know, um, starting to you know build yourself as an artist um, I don't think so I mean I was mainly inspired by as I it, it would have been the graffiti scene as a whole okay. there were certain artists I mean local in San Francisco um, I started doing graffiti at the tail end of Barry McGee Twist at uh, his time, and I came up at the same time as like um, and KR and Reminisce and all these that were all in SF. So it was it was the the graffiti artists around me that were kind of inspiring me back then. Um, it's kind of like skateboarding, where you know you you kind of feed off each other and kind of push each other. Yeah. To see what else you can. And I, I would pick up, if anything, I mean, I, I kind of was picking up some graffiti magazines and seeing the scene that was coming out in Europe. Mm -hmm. And like, because that stuff was just crazy compared to what I was seeing around me in SF. It was so off the wall and bizarre in comparison. And that kind of inspired me. But as much as I was doing um, letter styles, it was, it was the characters that, you know, I was just starting to do more and more characters. Like the whole little... Huck's world started to build yeah. from there. And yeah, I've got sketchbooks of just characters <laughs> and characters and characters. I mean, back then it was, it was all b boys, and you know, it was that style of, and that's where I was at, and that's what I was trying. Because along with graffiti, I was also dancing a lot mm. and DJing back then. So I was completely just that was the world that mm. I was in, and from that, it's it slowly developed into everything I do today. And, Maybe I'm jumping ahead a bit, but it was uh, seeing the stuff in Hong Kong, discovering Lao and Eric So, and seeing what they would, what Lao was doing with 12-inch figures, which just jumped right back okay, to my that's childhood. Not, that's not your normal white. action, man. Yeah, that's 
gorgeous. Yeah. And then seeing traveling through Tokyo and Japan and discovering that character art is part of like pop culture in Tokyo way more than it is here. Like you know, you every store scene it feels like every store has its own character. It's not just Sanrio and Hello Kitty. It's like, it's like the local Seven Eleven and the police <laughs> precinct. And all the instructions for, you know, getting on the train or they all have this idolized character. And I was just like, this is what I love doing. I love making characters and seeing it stylized. And so it, it just, it's fun. I like doing fun stuff. So. <laughs> um, you know what I find fascinating is that you're one of the OG Kid Robot employees, right? Like, how, how, did, how did you get, get to be involved with uh, Kid um, Robot? Okay. Um... Uh, I was working at the time, um, I got laid off after the dot-com boom, and I went back to my old, my old job before that, which was retail management and, uh, merchandising and display, and I was running a little, um, retail store on Haight Street in San Francisco, and I was... The only place that I could get my fix for the Hong Kong vinyl was this tiny little website called Kid Robot. They were actually bringing it in the U.S. and was kind of shopping it, and me and maybe two friends were geeking out on this stuff, and we just kind of bumped over that in Kubrick's. Mm -hmm. So actually, no, there was like a comic book store in the city that had Kubrick's. I was like, dude, these things are awesome, <laughs> and bear bricks. What are these? <laughs> Blind box, and it, it just piqued my interest. And then one day, on my way to work, it was this little bookstore, and uh, it was all newspapered up, and there was a Kid Robot logo on the glass. Hmm. And I was like, what, standing there on the sidewalk calling my buddy, like, Dude, there's an actual store opening up, like, mind blown. And uh, the this day... This back in 2002, right? Yeah. yeah. The day they opened, I was the first <laughs> customer I walked in. <laughs> I was like, yes! It's opened, I walk in, there's nobody in there, you know? And Paul was behind the register trying wow. to get the register to work. And uh, um, bought some stuff that day and um, met Paul and showed him. I ended up meeting with him shortly thereafter and showing him some toy designs that I had. And he was like, this is great. We're going to make this. And at the point, at that point in time, I was just like, oh, this is awesome. But I had no clue the production process. Yeah. No clue that, yeah, we're going to make this means that you might see this in two years. <laughs> And about a couple months after that um, was when Kid Robot moved to New York and they moved the offices and uh, Paul knew I had management experience and he was like, hey, can you come run the store? And yeah, and I kind of was there from the get-go. I set up a lot of like the sales practices and that and that. And uh, yeah. Trained um, who is now the Kid Robot guru on about two hours on how to yeah. make iTunes playlists. <laughs> that That's what fascinated me to prompt to this question, just because I've always wondered like how you became from our first customer in mind to, <laughs> to that. I to, mean, there's a funny story because I I used to go in the store and just hang out. I yeah. was that guy. I was just like, <laughs> oh, I wish I could buy more stuff. And, and the crew at the time, Anthony and Aaliyah and Michelle. And, uh, you know, they'd see me and chat with me and whatever. And then uh, they had a meeting one morning. They're all sitting waiting for Paul to show up. And I just came in and walked in. It was before the store opened. And they're like, what are you doing here? <laughs> Why are you? No, we're having a meeting. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I know, totally. I'm your new boss. And they're like, Anthony's like, get the fuck out of here. What are you, what are you talking about? You're my boss. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. I ran the store for, I think, two years before, uh, yeah, it was about two years where I realized that I wanted to focus more on making toys and I couldn't do both, yeah. you know, it was, it was a 50 hour a week job running that little store and it was like, took Paul and I'm like, I'm out of here, I'm going to make toys full time, I can, I can do this. And so, yeah. I'm sure you could understand. Yeah, no, yeah, I was, I was kind of nervous. And he was like, "I am so excited for you." Yeah, 